Hey, what's up? Welcome to the gym. Come on in. So most of you probably know I'm kind of a neat freak, very organized. And one problem that we had, or one challenge that we had, when we moved from the old home, and it, you may remember that old gym was about 16 by 20 feet. It was pretty good size. The new gym and the new house, nicer house, smaller gym, we really had to make efficient use of our space. And so I'm gonna walk you through how I've done that. Because look, I wanna train in an organized gym. I don't wanna be stepping on things. I don't wanna have things on the platform. And so we really have a place for everything and everything in its place. So let's walk through what we've put together here and hopefully you can take some of this back to your gym to make it a little more efficient use of space for yourself. Let's start with the platform. So we've got a nice platform here. It's eight feet deep by 12 feet long. And the reason we've got, so that's a pretty good sized platform, probably bigger than most people have. The reason we've done that is because I've got a big rack, but Rachel and I like to train together. So with a nice big rack, I've got a place and a big platform, I've got a place for someone to squat inside the rack, which is usually me. Rachel to squat outside the rack. She's got catch pins that we can put on the squat rack as well. And we can both train at the same time, or we can bench press at the same time with this bench because it's four feet deep. I can put my head down here in bench. Rachel can put her head down here in bench press. My J hooks are much higher than her J hooks are gonna be. And so it just creates a lot of efficiency there. So we can train at the same time, which is really nice. Again, this is an RML6. I've had the rack for about seven or eight years. You can see I've got these uh, wonderful monolith attachments from Rogue. This is the original one. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this is how long this piece is, the new ones you've probably seen have the heavier steel ball here at the end. Certainly I've hit myself in the head a few times with this, which I'm not crazy about, but it's still nice to have these. And so we've got, again, a place to squat and bench press all at the same time. And then you'll notice that because this is an RML6, that means it has six vertical posts, vertical uprights. So I use this back vertical upright so that I can store my weight. So I've got 55s, 45s, 25s, 10s. Again, I love these, um, this sort of training competition weights from Rogue. They got a little bit of a lip on them and they've got the nice metal hub in the middle. And then our accessory weights here, 10s, 5s, 2.5s, 1.25s. And of course, I've got my micro gains, micro plates over on the shelf. I love these rubber plates because, these little rubber change plates, because they stick onto the bar really well and you don't necessarily need to put colors on the bar when you use those. And so I've got my box up here, which we use, uh, I use almost exclusively for box squatting. It's also a nice place to sit between, between sets. And then we've got our chain holder here with all of our chains for accommodating resistance. And then last but not least, back inside the rack, we've got our crossover symmetry bands that we use just for some shoulder kind of prehab rehab warms up my shoulders, rear delts. Um, after years of competing in strongman and powerlifting, my shoulders would kind of beat up. And so I, this just makes me feel good. I, I do these between my warm up sets of press and bench. So that's the rack again. We've got pull up bar, normal pull up bar, plus the neutral grip handles up here. Uh, it works great. Really like the rack setup, like the platform setup. We can deadlift inside the rack and outside the rack. And we have space outside the rack to do power cleans and snatches if we want to as well, because we've got about five feet here between the back edge of the platform and the front edge of the rack. Okay, so as mentioned before, I've got a 12 foot long uh, platform. Most of you will have an eight by eight platform, and that works great because you can have, uh, a typical rack is four posts. This one's four feet apart. Some of these vertical posts are three feet apart. Occasionally they're only two feet apart, right? And so that you can save space there. But now you can actually get away as a single lifter with a platform that is just four feet deep by eight feet wide. And that's because a half rack, so you've got six posts on this one, four posts on a standard rack, and a half rack is just two vertical posts. And they'll, they'll mount off into the wall. And now you've got these space saving uh, systems for racks from almost every manufacturer that's out there that will actually fold up against the wall. So they either fold up or fold over, fold in. So if you need to use it, say in a garage in front of your car, you can back out your car. All you need is that four feet of space. You can train, you can fold it back up and you can pull your car right into the garage. So you can actually get away from an efficiency standpoint 
with as little as four feet of depth. Now, I, I would generally recommend eight if you can get it. And again, if you're gonna train with a training partner, I think 12 feet is optimal. And so that's really how we've got this, uh, how we have this gym set up. Let's turn to, so I've got the, the Rogue. This is a band and belt holder, I think. So we've got lots of our belts here, slingshots hanging, all of our jump stretch bands, Rogue bands here. This works nice. Lots of places, places to store. You can put wrist wraps on it, wrist straps on it, anything you need to hang. You can, we've done chains on these. They hold just fine as long as this is in a stud. We went ahead and pulled the trigger a couple years ago on the chalk bowl just because it's neat and tidy and sits in the corner. I can store my collars. These are my favorite aluminum rogue collars that I can store on it. And it works really, really well. And then you can see we've gotten everything out of the floor. So uh, Rogue also makes these really nice holders, which are made specifically for the Matador. This is the, the dip attachment for the rack. And you could just mount these into the studs. The holes are 16 inches apart. Mount that to the wall. These are the additional safeties that we use, usually for Rachel squatting out in front of the rack. And so we've got these hanging as well to get them off the floor. And then I went ahead and pulled the trigger on the power block a couple years ago. These are 90 pound power blocks in the stand. And we're able to just take our deadlift jack and put it kind of around that stand. We may hang this eventually, but it's pretty much out of the way at this point. So, so that's the right side of my rack. All right, to the left of the rack, it's pretty tight. You can see, again, weight storage here. And this is a little bit tight when you're loading weights on and off. We've got the big bar holder. They actually make bar holders now that are a little bit smaller. Of course, they have bar holders. They get mounted directly to the wall. This one holds nine bars. We have a couple extra that won't fit in this because this is what you do when you're a barbell person is you collect too many barbells. So we have all kinds of fun bars, the York split sleeve bar, the football bar, the axle, the BNR 2.0, safety squat bar, buffalo bar, you know, all this stuff. So um, uh, Yusaka Olympic bar, a Bella bar, all of those things. So we got a nice place to store the bars. And of course you can get the little rubber pads now that go down in here to protect the ends of the collars, ends of the sleeves, so that when they go down, it doesn't slam metal on metal. Um, I cannot recommend this enough. This seems so simple. We went and got a simple bookshelf and we put baskets in it and it's got stuff like we keep our shoes and knee sleeves in these. So mine are here, Rachel's are over here, wrist, wrist straps, ammonia. This is a, um, our uh, massage gun that we use, makeshift massage gun. So anything that you need, med balls are down in here. We use our um, Echo. I don't want to call it the lady's name because she'll stand up and start talking to me. <laughs> and then we've got our closet here with our Titan dumbbell rack that we've used and we've got dumbbells in here. We've got our lever belts hanging. One of the things I would love to hear from you is do you have an easy way to store lever belts? Because we don't have, it won't hang on the typical belt and band hanger. So we just store these right now. We hang them here. Some of you probably have better ideas than that. We've got our center of mass bells. We've got kettlebells, more med balls, kind of everything you need. And then extra things like your bench blocks and bench pads in the closet. So all in all, you can see we really have a place for everything and everything in its place. We have easily been able to train four people at one time in the gym. We can set chairs up just inside the door, two people squatting outside the rack, two people squatting inside the rack. And I just love it because for me, the gym needs to be a place of solace so that when I come in, I can focus on training. I don't work in here. I don't work where I train. I don't train where I work. When it comes time to train, we've got a great place to train. It's always organized and ready to go. And so this is how we've made the most use, efficient use of our small space in our home gym. If you watched the last video, you saw my pre-workout routine. You probably have a great one as well. What we don't wanna do is have a great pre-workout routine and then go into a messy, unorganized gym. We want the gym to be set up to give us the best atmosphere possible for hitting PRs and getting stronger and stronger every single workout. Nice.